Hello, uh, I'm Matt Parkhouse. I write the Keep Em Flying column for the BMW Owners News. Today I'm going to be talking about how to balance the carburetors. I'll be using my wife's R100 as a test platform. Uh, the, same, the procedure is the same for the slide carbs, which you find on the 600s and the 500s, but uh, just about everyone has a CV carb. I prefer using this method as opposed to a vacuum twin max or some mercury column system because with that you're balancing vacuum. Uh, with what we're doing here you're balancing power output and there's other forces at play other than uh, vacuum. Ba basically you're doing one uh, side and then the other you're trying to get things as equal as possible before you start doing this, there's uh, several things you want to be sure of. You want the bike to be in good tune. You want the valves to be set, the timing to be right where it's supposed to be. Uh, if you have points, you want them gapped and timed properly. Uh, you want to be sure the choke assembly is working as it should. Uh, you don't want the carburetor to be, um, the floats to be too low or too high. Basically, you want everything in good order. You want the fuel line to be good and not leaking. You want the gas taps to be passing uh, fuel. You want to be sure that the uh, throttle cables are um, in good trim. You also want to be sure they're properly adjusted. You can actually do maybe 80%, 85% of the throttle cable adjustment by eye. You want about a millimeter, a millimeter and a half of free play on each cable, on each side. This is showing 23.2 K ohms of resistance. And what we're doing is we're measuring the 5,000 ohms of each spark plug caps, the 6,000 ohms of each coil, and the connections in between. They're all connected in a series arrangement and you want it to be around 20,000 to 24,000 uh, K ohms on this model of uh, Airhead. You want the bike warmed up. You want to ride it at least a couple of miles uh, before starting this procedure. With the bike warmed up, I put a little bit of carb cleaner, which works like gasoline as a fuel. And if it gets pulled in, uh, through past a uh, worn o-ring uh, the engine speed will pick up if the engine picks up it's time to rebuild that carburetor um, the shaft for the uh, butterfly the tools involved are fairly simple uh, I use a pair of extenders that I made from BMW spokes it just happens that the thread diameter and pitch on a slash five six seven spoke is the same as the spark plug uh, diameter and pitch so these things screw right onto the spark plugs then you put the cap on top of them it gives you an exposed area that you can ground um, short to ground you want to be sure with these adapters that everything's pretty firmly in place uh, you do not want to run the uh, BMW engine uh, with an open spark plug cap. It was okay to do that with the Dash 2s, the pre-1970 bikes. They had a built-in uh, safety um, spark gap uh, at the Magneto. Um, but with the uh, points traded ignition that the Airheads use, uh, it is possible that if you uh, pull the spark plug cap off a running engine. Uh, the high tension um, voltage will be looking for a path to ground. It might be through the coil, it might be through the ignition module, and it can uh, damage components. So be sure that the uh, high tension uh, voltage has a path to ground. As you do this, you either want to do it quickly or set up fans if you um, are if you're new to this and really taking your time you want to set up a fan on the engine or stop and start let let it cool down 
Uh, I usually get it done um, within a minute or two, so I don't worry about uh, overheating. Uh, you want it hot, but not overly hot. When you actually get to um, shorting out one side or the other, you use an insulated handled screwdriver uh, for obvious reasons and you uh, short one side to ground and then the other. Uh, I adjust for the idle first. You're adjusting both for idle and high speed running. Uh, the idle is actually a adjustment to the carburetor. The high speed throttle cable, uh, you're adjusting the throttle cable. You want to start with the carburetor idle air screw um, set at about uh, three quarters of a turn, about 75% of a turn. So run it all the way in and then back it out 75% uh, of one turn. Uh, that's a good starting point. You'll probably end up end, ending up near that um, as you make your adjustment. Fire up the bike. If uh, it won't idle um, on its own, Screw in the uh, idle speed adjustment, that's the big knurled nut on the bottom of the carburetor on later bikes. It's um, accessible from the top of the carburetor. Um, just screw that in until you've got the bike idling. The ideal uh, idle speed is around 800-900 RPM. Uh, you don't want it idling too low. Some people kind of make it a point of pride to see how low they can get their idle and have it keep going. Um, you want some, you want it idling at least at uh, eight or nine hundred uh, to keep the oil pressure up. You don't want it idling at like five hundred or six hundred if you can make it do that, um, simply because the engine's turning so slowly that the oil pump is not working as it should. It really helps to have a working tack, uh, but if you want to, if you can do this by ear. And basically, what you're trying to do is get it so it just barely keeps going on each side. Um, once you've got it barely going on the left side, when you get the right side barely going, the two sides should add, when they're both going, you should have um, around eight or 900 RPM. So short out the right um, and see how it's and see how it's running. If it's um, running um, too fast, uh, back out the um, idle adjust screw until it's barely going, and then uh, work with the idle air mixture until it's running the best, running the fastest and just go between the idle air screw and the idle adjust screw until you've got it running as fast as it will uh, idle um, and barely keep going. And then uh, repeat the process on the other side. Um, when you're done you should end up with it idling around 800 uh, to 900 RPM. If it's idling a little slower than that um, just back out the uh, idle adjust screw ever so slightly until you get it down to 800, 900. Uh, once you've got the idle um, adjusted as you like it, uh, you're moving to the uh, high speed and basically you short out one side as you open the throttle. You, you want to um, Tighten up your friction screw if the bike has one. If the bike doesn't have one, I use a pair of vice grips on the throttle grip uh, to compress it slightly and that will lock it in place. But basically you run it up to about 26, 2500 RPM on one side and then um, as gracefully and as slick as you can, switch sides. In other words, if you shorted the left side to ground, um, switch sides to the right side and um, monitor the needle of the tack as you do this. Um, if the tack is not working, uh, you need to do it by ear. And ideally, the tack needle should not move. The 
uh, RPM should not change. Usually what happens is it'll pick up a little bit or it'll drop a little bit and you adjust the throttle cable accordingly. If the right side, if you switch to the right side and it picks up 200 RPM, you either um, run in the adjuster on the right hand side or run out the adjuster on the left hand side to equalize the gap, the um, adjustment of the throttle cable. And you just go back and forth, round up to 2600 on the left side, short out the uh, left side so you're running on the right side and look for any deviation in the uh, tachometer and once you've got it so it, the needle of the tack remains uh, steady as you switch sides you've got it. Tighten down the little lock nuts and uh, off you go. The difference between a properly set up airhead and one that's been uh, run for a while without any adjustment can be pretty amazing. Um, I've, been, I've operated a number of really rough, um, kind of almost unpleasant uh, running airheads uh, without of balance engines and um, you know with the carburetors badly in need of adjustment and you know within half an hour it's like it's a different bike. Everything's in adjustment, it's smooth, you can feel the power strokes, but it's not obnoxious. Uh, and the bike is just running uh, much more pleasantly. And that's what these bikes are uh, built to do.